and hand things over to Tim. If you're ready, Every, you're muted, Tim. Um, let's see, I'll ask to unmute. There you go. Sorry. Perfect. <laughs> I, I have my mic off too. So um, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can okay. see and hear you perfectly. Good. And you you're spotlighted. Hear, you <laughs> might hear some dark barking too. So my apologies in advance. Uh, so welcome everyone to uh, a new year of... Uh, of speaker series at the foundation with our Cincinnati Northern Kentucky chapter. Um, I think we have some good things already in the works. This this should be this promises to be a really enlightening presentation today um, from our three guests, and uh, uh, we're excited about mixing things up a little bit, getting into uh, some different programming and speaker series this, this year that I think we'll, that you all appreciate, uh, along with you know uh, hearing as you always do about some of the exciting advances that are uh, being funded by the foundation. So thanks to everyone here for, for uh, attending and for supporting our efforts to, to try to bring this, this uh, sort of information to you. Um, I really, I, I won't take long here because I want to get right into things, but I wanted to do what I always do and thank uh, uh, everyone who serves as part of our chapter leadership, including Allie, who as our chapter engagement manager does such a great job working with us and Allie and I work together a lot on other, other things as well. And she's a great supporter of our chapter, a great cheerleader for our chapter and uh, accomplishes a great deal behind the scenes as does uh, the rest of our leadership with Jim and Peggy and Susan and Lisa and Dan and Alex um, that you've all met before, I'm sure. And um, I, we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them. Uh, with our professional outreach efforts and education and uh, everything else that we have going on sort of behind the scenes again. And uh, it's, it's a really strong concerted effort on everybody's behalf. And, and I couldn't be happier to, than I am to have the team assembled that we have. So uh, with that said, I think, um, Ali, am I just uh, turning it over to Peggy? Or to you? Me, I, I need to unmute myself now. <laughs> um, I am going to make a, a few notes about uh, foundation um, just the overview of the foundation, maybe some research advancements, but I'll share my screen for uh, probably five minutes. But other than that, Peggy, I will give you your cue, <laughs> I promise. I did, um, I did forget one yeah. thing, who day? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy that hat, <laughs> Tim, okay. So let me remove the spotlights. Um, so I'm going to be sharing my screen right now. One moment. Um, let's see. Is everyone seeing the PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. Okay. One moment. Let me make sure I can. You would think I would have this down by now, but. That's oh, never easy. Not yet. Okay. So let's... everyone, it's in presentation mode. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So I just wanted to, like I said, go over our track record and a few other slides, but I will only be taking uh, probably five minutes of your time, and then we can go into our speakers. But. <laughs> The Foundation Fighting Blindness is the world's leading organization committing to finding treatments and cures for retinal diseases. Um, starting with 856 million um, has been raised to support and advance research that will reverse blindness and restore vision since our inception in 1971, which um, most of you probably know we just had our 50th anniversary. Last year, the foundation received 87 grants, and that includes over 109 investigators in 70 institutions, um, eye hospitals, universities. So going off of that, the foundation has funded studies at hundreds of prominent institutions throughout the world, 
Um, this includes Wilmer Eye Institute, John Hopkins University School of Medicine, Institute de la Vision in France, Paris, France, Mooresfield Eye Hospital, University College London, and Shea Institute, University of Pennsylvania, which um, fun fact, that's where our um, Gordon Gunn, our founder, that's where he went um, when he first was um, being diagnosed and trying to find a treatment. Now going over to our inherited retinal disease landscape. So over 200,000 people in the U.S. have a rare inherited retinal disease, also known as IRDs. This number increases to over 4.5 million globally. 10 million people in the U.S. are affected with age-related macular degeneration and 150 million globally. We have 43 clinical trials that are either underway or being prepared to launch for potential treatments. And just so you all know, funding has been a huge driving force behind the progress towards our, the cures, including the identification of more than 270 genes linked to these IRDs. Um, so as I just mentioned, over 270 genes have been identified and these include uh, 65 genes for retinitis pigmentosa, 21 genes for Stargardt disease, 14 genes for LCA, 15 genes for Usher syndrome, and then um, leftover, I shouldn't say leftover genes, um, the other genes for other ret retinal diseases. So the foundation has a lot of programs and initiatives. So over 40, volunteer-led chapters. So um, the Cincinnati Northern Kentucky chapter is one of those proud chapters. Um, I, once again, what to echo what uh, Tim said, our chapter president, you got, this would not be possible today without you all and your efforts. So um, going left from right in this, this um, circle, I guess you can say, um, our volunteer chapters, we have a national network that raises funds and that includes public awareness, uh, support to families affected by retinal diseases, and um, we have a clinical consortium, which includes over 20 clinical centers of excellence with experience in IRDs and with uh, standardized assessment protocols. We then have an RD fund, which was just launched a few years ago. Um, this retinal disease venture philanthropy fund drives emergency emerging therapies that are moving forward or are currently in clinical trials. We have My Retina Tracker, which is a global, free, secure, easy to use, patient controlled registry with over, uh, actually with close to right now, uh, 19,000 profiles. Grants and awards, we uh, support clinical studies, preclinical research applicable to a broad range of retinal degenerative diseases. Biobonds are advocacy opportunities for advancing new studies, including uh, loans for Biomedical Research Act. We have Visions, which uh, most of you will, will know that we're having it in person June this year, which provides a supportive learning environment like this one through conference seminars and workshops. So I would consider it a more in-depth speaker series, which goes over um, a few days. Dinners, galas, events, um, uh, includes a variety of custom unique events in cities across the nation uh, to increase that awareness and research funding. Um, to give one main example, Hope From Home, March 6th, that is a virtual event that we have for the second time this year. Lastly, uh, we have Vision Walks which uh, it's now over in 35 cities, and that has raised more than 60 million since the first one in spring 2006. So 
with a bunch of uh, programs and initiatives. Obviously, there's so many ways to get involved, um, including walk events, conference sponsorships, just workplace giving, volunteer opportunities, joining the chapter, um, donations, legacy giving, fundraising on your own, and just staying informed. Lastly, I want to make sure we thank our sponsors, which make having this opportunity today possible, including Genentech, Janssen, Editas, 4DMT, InFocus Clinical Research, Murad GTX, AGTC, Pixium Vision, and Apellis. So thank you all for listening to me. I don't want to say rant, but talk about the foundation or brag about the foundation. I, I truly appreciate it. If you'd like to give feedback about um, this event or just become more involved, please email me or I'll, I'll give an easier email, chapters at fightingblindness.org. And now we will get into the true uh, presentation. And I'll hand things over to Peggy to introduce our first speaker. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thanks, Allie. Our first speaker is a librarian at the Ohio Library for the Blind and Physically Disabled at Cleveland Public Library. His previous work experience includes 11 years in professional sports marketing, including stints with three major league baseball teams. I'm curious to find out which ones those are. But anyway, please welcome Kenneth Red. Thanks, Peggy. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Ken. I'm with the Ohio Library for the Blind and Physically Disabled. Um, we're located at Cleveland Public Library. Um, and by the way, I am a big Cleveland Browns fan, but I'm actually going to be rooting for the Bengals today. I was actually rooting for them last week, too. So I, have a, I went to the University of Dayton, and I have a lot of buddies from Cincinnati area, so I have to give it up to them when they're doing better than us. But um, So we're located at Cleveland Public Library, but we are a part of a national network of libraries called NLS for the National Library Service, and there are, I think there are 56 of them, and they're like in territories like uh, – Virgin Islands and all the states. So there's one of us in every state. And we are a free library for anyone who has difficulty reading standard print. For example, if you can't read because of a vision impairment and you have a, a, an eye disease or if you're legally blind, but you don't have to be blind, but if you can't read simply, actually, if you have difficulty reading, so it, you don't have to um, be blind, but if you have difficulty reading, you will qualify for our service. Um, if you have a physical disability that makes it difficult to read because you can't hold a book or turn a page, you will qualify. If you have a learning disability um, like dyslexia, you will qualify. And we have people of all ages who qualify for our service. We have um, I think someone who is, is, you can be from year one, you can start, but there's actually a lady who calls us that's actually 105 years old, who picks up the phone and calls us herself, which is amazing. So you can, I, I don't want people to get caught up on the, the blind part because it's, it, it sort of turns some people off. But if you have difficulty, the interesting thing is um, this year, we actually changed our name. We changed it to the Ohio Library for the Blind and Print Disabled. So we think that better describes our users. So it's not um, just physically disabled, but it's print disabled. If you can't read print for whatever reason, you qualify for our service. So um, I think our library is going to be making a, a bigger, um, you know, you know, we're going to talk about that a lot more and do some other things during the year to, to let people know about that change. But we're, we're, we're actually going through a lot of changes this year. I'll explain a little more um, in a minute, but um, this is a, a big change for us. I think we started, we opened in, in 1896, 97, 
And we were one of the first 19 libraries in MLS. And I think we started doing the library service full time in 1931. Um, but the things that we offer, we first thing we offer are our audio books and magazines. We offer um, Braille books and magazines. We don't teach you how to read Braille, um, but we actually offer, we provide the service and we offer the books and magazines. We offer DVDs with description, which are basically all movies, but there's a there's an option, an audio option on the on the secondary audio options, you can get to it and you just hit English audio and a narrator will come in whenever there's a point in the movie where there's no dialogue, a narrator will come in and describe what's going on. So if two people are walking across a field on a sunny day, a narrator will come in and say that they'll tell tell you how they're dressed and things like that. So if someone has low vision, they can watch it with their family because it's a regular DVD, but it's just that, you know, the included audio part. Um, also, we have playaways, which are small MP3s that you have to plug some headphones into. They're really good for for traveling. If you don't want to take your player, um, you can just, you know, ask for some of those and you can get some of the books. We have a, a, a smaller um, supply of the playaways than we do of the the regular audio books. Um, but our main thing is our, 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 we call them talking books. And if you want, you can receive a, a digital player that plays our books. It's, it's not, it's not really very high tech. It's just, you know, you put the, the, the cartridge in and it'll play the book. Um, probably have over a hundred thousand titles. We don't get everything that comes on the mass market, but we get a lot of materials. We get all the popular things. We get nonfiction. We get any subject that you can imagine, everything from nonfiction to religion. We actually have the Bible on there. It's probably our longest book. I think it's 97 hours, but um, it's we, we anything you, that you can think of, we can, we can get. One thing we don't do is we can't make suggestions on books that aren't in the in the um, collection and ask NLS to actually, you know, create a copy of it because that's something that they they do at the, in the collection development level in DC. Um, most people get the player and they keep it for as long as you want. Some people have it for 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 years. It's, I mean, you can have it for the rest of your life, and then your family can send it back when you're done. Or if you get it and you don't like it, you can send it back right away. There's no cost associated at all. Everything that we mail out um, goes out free matter for the blind. So there's no cost. In the upper right-hand corner where you normally put stamps, we'll have a sticker or a label that says free matter for the blind. And you just put it in the regular mail and it'll come back to us. Um, so I think I, one of the drawbacks is I don't think the post office really treats it like it should be. It should be considered like first class, but for some reason, things travel really slow. Um, sometimes things take maybe seven to 10 days to get down to Cincinnati. And for the folks in Kentucky, if, you're, if, you're, if there are some people in Kentucky, this service is offered in Kentucky as well. There's a, a state library in, in Kentucky that, that offers this as well. Um, if you're tech savvy, you don't have to get the player. You can actually download our books on a device. So if you have a smartphone or a tablet, any Apple product, iPhone, iPad, iPod, um, touch, you can download them. Or if you have any Android device or a Kindle Fire, you can download the books directly to those devices. And, and we're trying to get people to you know, migrate to that that's probably the best way to use the service because in 2020, when we had the pandemic, we shut down for about two and a half months when everybody else was quarantined. And um, we weren't able to send out the materials from our library because um, we couldn't get in there. But the people who use the downloading, we call it BARD, um, whoever, the people who could use that, they continued to get their books because that service doesn't shut down. So we try to get people to use that. Or if, you, if you're if you not tech savvy, we'll try to encourage you to get a partner or a family member. 
um, to help you get up on BARD so you can use that just in case you want to. Um, um, one huge change for our service that I was um, talking about earlier is we used to send out our materials one book on one cartridge. So it would be if you got 20 books, you would get 20 separate cartridges. Now we're doing something called download on demand. We're the one of the last libraries in our network to transition to this, but we just started in at the beginning of January. And what it does is we're, we're putting everything on one cartridge. So we'll send you one cartridge and it basically will have eight books when we first start off but you can get as many as 24 books on one cartridge but you just have to jump from one book to the next when you want to read the different books and what it does it allows us to um get rid of all the 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 shelf space that we're, we're we probably store about half a million um copies of books on our shelf so we're going to get rid of that and then it allows us to download books when you request them so anything in our collection is now available. So in the past, we had a request list and, a, and you had to wait for other people to return books, just like a regular library. You had to wait for other people to return books before you could get them. And unless you were one of the first people on the list, but now anything in the collection is available because everything is being downloaded when you request them. So if, if you're somebody who, uh, wants 24 books, the computer will send you 24 books. And then seven days later, it'll send you another 24. And then after that, you just have to send one of those cartridges back to get more books. So we've been doing this for less than a month and it's going smoothly right now. But if you are somebody who actually is in the service already and you have any questions about the way it's working, or if you we're surprised to get something like that, a cartridge that's full of books. Ask me any questions when we're done and I can you know, tell you how, how things are, how the, the best way to make things work. Um, let's see, a couple other things. Our, our Braille collection, we have probably 22,000 physical Braille books that we have stored that we can send out to you. Um, but we also have um, probably 75 to 80 different magazines, Braille magazines that we send out. And the Braille magazines we send out, they're, in, they're disposable. Once you get finished with them, you just throw them away or you store them or keep them or give them to somebody else. Um, our, our library is, is really good for, we support um, a place here called the Cleveland Site Center. They have book clubs. Um, they have different kind of like children's reading clubs and they can call us and say, um, if you, uh, can you send 30 copies of, make 30 copies of this book and send it out to the people who are in the service already and send it out to them when, um, when we read this book. So there are a few different ways you can sign up for our service. You can sign up as an individual and individuals actually get their own player and the books come directly to them, or you can sign up as an institution. So if you live in a, a, a senior living facility, the facility or the hospice or um, even a library can get players and distribute them to people as they need them. So the whoever is in charge of the service, it could be a um, activities director or a media specialist. Um, they can give them, they can control it and give them to people as they need them, but you won't be responsible uh, over like ultimately the, the, the facility will. And you can also sign up as a school and schools can get them for their kids that would be eligible. The kids can also get the, the player or they can sign up as an individual, but the school itself can sign up as well. Um, we, when I mentioned BART, um, we probably have about 2000 people out of our 10,000 active users who use BARD right now. But like I said, we're trying to get people to um, transition to it. If, you, if you're interested in it, let us know. Um, we can get you more information. We can actually help you sign up on, 
online, actually not online, but over the telephone, you have to do, you have to sign up separately, not just the regular application that you fill out, but um, you, you'd fill out something online. It takes probably two minutes. Um, to sign up for our service, you just need to fill out an application. It's a four page application. You can get to it on our website or I can send you a physical physical copy of it. And the only thing is at the bottom of the first page, a medical professional has to sign off to certify that you do need it. And, and that's all we need. We, we don't, we never challenge uh, a, a, a doctor's signature. And when I say a medical professional, it could be your eye doctor, it could be your family physician, it can be a nurse, it could be a social worker. Um, even like a therapist um, can sign off and ultimately librarians can do it as well. So any library throughout the state, you can go to their um, branch and your librarian, if they have a relationship with you can sign off as well. Um, but the service is free. There's no cost to it at all. If you lose, if you lose some materials, we don't charge you. We just send you more. Um, if you lose a player or break it, we'll just mark it you know, uh, lost or you have, you have you send it back to us and we'll send you another one. It's, you know, one, it's one thing that when you talk about the government, you know, providing services, this is one free service that really comes in handy because I've been here since 2008 and I, I never get tired of hearing people talking about how much, you know, we've helped them out because they may have macular or, something that they used to be huge readers and they thought that you know that window was closed but all of a sudden you know you find out about this service and you know you know it's 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 life-changing and you know i i i love it i i, I like I, I actually went back to school in 2017 i was actually 49 and for some reason i had been a library assistant and I said, I want to go back to school and become a librarian so I can help people, you know, more. And I graduated from Syracuse in 2019 with my library degree. So, and I actually have not rushed to get a librarian job because I have to go someplace else to probably get become a librarian. So I'm still here um, three years later because um, I, I enjoy working with the patrons and I, I enjoy what we do. Um, I was going to tell um, Peggy earlier, she said she was curious what uh, baseball teams I worked for. Um, when I graduated from University of Dayton, I wanted to get into sports because I used to play sports and I wanted to work in pro sports. So I actually uh, was befriended by our athletic director at University of Dayton, and he hooked me up with an internship at the Chicago White Sox baseball team. So I interned there in 92, and then I came back home to Cleveland and uh, – actually worked with the Cleveland Indians from 94 to 2000. Then I moved to Los Angeles and I work with the Dodgers out there. So I've worked with a few different teams, but that's basically what we do. Um, if I'm gonna give you our, our email, I mean, our website and our phone number. So these are, um, the best way to call us is with this 800 phone number. Um, it's 800-362 one two six two and you can call us ask us any questions or um, we can send out the um the application but if you want to go to our website our website has all of our information it you know everything that we offer it has a, a, a link where you can download our our application or like i said we can send it to you but our 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 website is o l b is in boy P is in Paul, D is in David, dot CPL for Cleveland Public Library, dot ORG. So OLBPD dot CPL dot ORG. So, you know, reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, if you, you can ask for me, I, we have probably six or seven people who pick up the phone. That's all we do is, is answer the phone and, and help people with whatever they need and, you know, help you out with your issues. But um, I'd like to open it up for any questions if you have any. Thank you so much, Ken. Oh, uh, Tim, was that you? Yeah. 
Um, just quickly, you mentioned for, for those who are maybe uh, joining us from Northern Kentucky, can you tell us how, where, where would they go in Kentucky? What library, how would they reach out to somebody there? Um, actually, I have a, on my desk at work, I have a, a, a catalog that has all the libraries in this, the country and their phone numbers, but I don't have that. I don't have it here. Um, but you can, if you want, you can just call me and I can get that for you on, on Monday, but I, I just don't have it in front of me. Okay. But I'm um, see the, the thing is we're all have, we all have different names. I can't, we're just Ohio library for the blind and print disabled in, in Ohio, but Kentucky, they may be like Kentucky talking book library or so I don't, I don't really know everybody's designations, but yeah. if you want to reach out to me, I'd, I'd be happy to get that information for you. Okay. Thanks. I don't know if the NLS would have a listing or, or not, but I'm, they know they do. Okay. They do, but I, I don't even know where to find it on their, on their website. Yeah. Um, but okay. Cause, Cause there's a lot of information on there, but I'll, I'll get that. I'll, I'll definitely send that, send an email to Allie so she can have it in case anyone wants to know, but um, I'll, I'll, I won't be able to do it until Monday. Great. Well, thank you. This is really helpful. I don't know if there are other questions, but thank you. Actually to echo that, um, as you guys know, I'm going to be emailing the, the recording of this. So Ken, we'll talk offline, but that, I think that that sounds perfect in terms of um, providing that information, but um, there are, we got uh, two other questions. So Jim. Uh, hi, Ken. Hey, uh, thanks again for presenting to our, to our chapter. Um, I've been using BARD for, I don't know, probably four years. And <laughs> I um, use the app on my phone and it's, I mean, it's awesome. I probably listen to, uh, I probably average a book a week. Um, mm -hmm. Had a couple questions. That, well, the one thing I didn't know was the, uh, like being able to check out movies with audio description. We were just going through our collection of movies that we have over the years. And of course, none of them have that. And I was kind of wondering because to uh, access those on, you know, Netflix or prime um, many do have it, but the older movies, you can usually get it, but you have to, you know, actually have to rent it, pay to rent one. So um, I was interested in learning more about that. And then my other question was, uh, is there a, an easier way, or how would you recommend um, uh, the search process seems to be a little cumbersome. Like if there's a book I'm trying to find, um, I mean, you've got, I don't know what, 70,000, maybe more than that now. Um, what's the best way to try to search for a particular book? I've tried like keyword searches and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'd just be interested in your uh, suggestion for that. Okay, first thing, um, for the DVDs, um, now we, we, we don't have the streaming services. We just have the physical DVDs. So mm -hmm. you have to have a, a DVD player. We don't offer, we don't provide that. We just have the, the DVDs. So we probably have, um, uh, probably 1500 DVDs. And up until the pandemic started, we were getting, um, like a regular infusion of the new stuff. But since there haven't been a lot of movies, in the theaters for some reason they haven't uh, they haven't just put out a lot of new things since uh 2019 but we do have we, had, we do have a nice you know selection um so if you want i can actually um send you i, I don't know if can you can you read large print or can can you i, I can actually get a a, a, a pdf and email it to you can you do you have jaws can you read things on your, I, on your yeah computer? i do i i use uh, jaws on my computer and i use voiceover on my phone so um okay yeah, so yeah, i yeah, I, I, both I, work. I can send you i can send you a list of all of our all of our um a list of all the movies that we have if you want um can you give me your email address uh sure it's uh j a s h i r k 629 at gmail yeah, and what's, what's your name again uh jim jim shirk s-h-i-r-k jim shirk okay so i will get that out to you on monday and That'd be great Thanks. um also for the um bar the, the search can be tough 
it the, the the only thing I use on there is the part that says search the collection. I don't use the the first letter search by name or title or any of that stuff. I just do search the collection. But it's even though um it can be broad, you can still use like the Boolean terms and and put different things in there. So if you want to put a title and then put the author's name, um that'll like narrow it down but if okay. you notice if you notice the um the search results it'll show so if you look for an author the results just give you the 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 any 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 author's name that might show up in the title it might give you the author's name that'll show up in the annotation it'll give you the author's name that shows up in in the subject so it you you just have to go through it and 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 be more specific so it'll it'll just give you fewer results so if you give it the title and the name of the author it, it'll just just do the and just just do title and like patterson or or you can even do if if, if there's a way that you can do a search and i don't know if you can get the number well, if you put the DB number in there, so if you if you took a DB number, the five digit number, or now there's six digits if it's in a hundred the hundred thousands, but you can just put the number in there and it'll give you the exact book. Okay, but, didn't think but, about that. Yeah, so that that it, that that that'll give it to you. So some people just call us. Some people will call me and say, "Hey, can you look and see if you have this book and give me the number?" So they don't have to do. A search for it and i'll just give them the number and they'll put the the number in the bar and it'll just come up right away um so that that's the only thing you have to you just have to play around with it to to get it to be a little more precise all right thank you you're welcome um so we have one more question or hand raised so i, I do want to mention something i keep hearing like noises but no one's we everyone's staying on the call I keep hearing like that that noise that sounds like people are leaving but um I just wanted to mention that Ken just in case you, you I, I actually haven't heard it I haven't oh, heard it oh I think it's just the host then but it can be distracting so I just wanted to mention that no one's leaving the call or anything but um last hand raised is a Jennifer um, hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Holliday from Cincinnati Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And um, I, I just wanted to let if all of you know, if you're from uh, either Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky, I'm guessing everybody's from Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky. Uh, one of my staff is, um, her name is Jill. She's relatively new with CABVI, but she is one of my uh, coordinators and she works with the um, Ohio Library for the Blind and Kentucky, Kentucky Library for the Blind. And so if um, we can certify um, visual impairment. So if you're in Ohio or Kentucky and you just need that certification and you've um, received services from CABVI before, we can certify that and we can get you in touch with the with the Kentucky Library if you're not already. And another solution for searching is if you put quotes around what you're searching for, that can pick it up as well. Um, and just, uh, Ken, I've been um, an NLS user for a very long time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I also, um, I've used BARD since BARD was a pilot program. So uh -huh. like many years ago, and I love it and it's great. And um, your, I also want to say I've worked a lot with your staff um, that uh, answer the phone and answer the questions and they are wonderful and, and really great. And we really uh, appreciate them. Great. I'm, I'm glad you have that, you had that experience. And thanks for the quote. I'm going to try the quotes too. see, see if that helps because I, I actually I had to learn how to use BARD myself because I wanted to help people use it. And I, I download a lot of books. I, I, I listen to books every night when I go to bed. And, you know, I, I love it. So for, for those of you who are interested in, and maybe hesitant, please just give it a shot because you'll, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, one thing, one thing I, I didn't mention is 
besides all the different subjects that you want, you can actually exclude things. So if you're somebody who um, doesn't want sex, violence, or strong language, you can ex make exclusions and not get anything like that. And um, so you can get exactly what you want. Unfortunately, some of the books that we get these days are what we call commercial audio. And that means that they come directly from the publisher and we can't rate those and we can't get the exclusion. So some of the things may slip through. So if you have like a favorite author like James Patterson, you're going to get everything by James Patterson. It's not going to stop the things that you exclude. So you just have to pick and choose and say, OK, I don't want to read this and just send it back. But yeah, so basically that's it. But thanks. I really appreciate everybody's time. And, and, you know, hopefully you'll give us a call and we can, we can get you signed up. Thank you. Yes, I actually, I'm a little embarrassed to ask this, but you're saying our program, I want to make sure that everyone's aware of uh, the program you're mentioning. Can you spell that out? Um, B A R. D is in dog. So it stands for Braille and Audio Reading Download. So the, the interesting thing about it is you can actually not only download the audio books, but you can download Braille books. And with those Braille books, you can, um, if you have a refreshable Braille display, you can actually play the books in Braille on your display. And we're, we're in the process right now. Um, NLS is, is working on a pilot program to you know, introduce the refreshable Braille displays just like we do our 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 talking book players. But once once they get get one that works properly, they're gonna send them out to anybody who wants to use them. It'll be free. You can keep it as long as you want. So you'll you can use the the Braille as well as the audio. Wonderful. Thank you for explaining that. Um, does anyone else have any questions for for Ken? And like I said, uh, we'll make sure to email everyone the recording and just contact information next week. But um, let's go into our next speaker. Uh, Jim, if you wouldn't mind introducing uh, Jennifer. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jim Shirk. I'm the vice president of our local Cincinnati, North Kentucky chapter. Uh, I've been involved with uh, FFB locally for uh, quite a few years, I guess. Um, and as vice president, my primary role is to support Tim, although he um, has been president for since the inception and there's really not a lot to support. He does such a great job. But um, anyway, we're also involved with uh, some professional outreach as well as uh, fundraising. Um, and I uh, wanna thank all of you for joining us, whether it's live or whether you're uh, picking up the recording later, but um, we just encourage you, if you're uh, interested in getting involved, we can always use um, more people to be involved. We've got a variety of different, um, uh, different groups, different leadership positions uh, that can always use help. So um, again, it's a, it's a great group of people. We have a lot of fun and I uh, would encourage you to, to get involved. Um, I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker, Jennifer Holliday. Um, Jennifer is the manager of information uh, information systems and volunteer systems with um, the Sensei Association of Blind and Visually Impaired, CABVI. Uh, Jennifer has been there for 15 years um, and is a graduate of Thomas More University with a Bachelor of Science in Communications, as well as a master's from NKU in some administration, let's see. Uh, apologize, uh, Jennifer. <coughs> um, yeah, apologize for that. Um, Jennifer started uh, as a volunteer, um, an intern with the uh, 5K program, um, then became involved, uh, was hired on as the coordinator for the one-on-one -on -one volunteer program um, and has been manager uh, of the two programs now for about 10 years. Uh, so with that, uh, Jennifer is going to speak on the personalized talking print and radio reading programs that CABVI has had available for uh, quite some time. Uh, I've used them for several years and uh, I feel like it's a great program that more people need to know about. So with that, Jennifer, thank you.
All right, good morning, everyone. All right, Miss Allie, um, do I have it? Am I correct here? Can you see me? Yes. Is everything good? <laughs> you are good to go. <laughs> awesome, thank you. So, who day? Woohoo! Very excited about our Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, thanks so much for um, asking. Uh, us to be a part of this today, Jim, we really um, appreciate it because you're right. Um, our services really um, need to be learned about because if any of you have been with us um, for a period of time, you might be familiar with our radio reading services where you received a receiver in the mail and you listened um, to the inquire at seven o'clock in the morning and the USA Today in the afternoon, but it was very specifically scheduled and you had to listen to it when um, it was available. And if not, you didn't really get to listen to it. But there's a whole lot of really cool things now happening. And um, I want to start with personalized talking print because that's really where this um, conversation idea I believe started. Um, personalized talking print is a really great on-demand service. Um, and especially if um, you really just wanna be able to call a phone number and have access to print information. And so um, it's a voicemail system. You call the phone number if you wanna to listen to the Inquirer, the, um, there's articles from the USA Today, um, it's very specifically targeted, and we also have requests that people can ask our readers to read. It's all volunteer-based. Um, our volunteers have a really awesome group of volunteers. We couldn't do all that we do without them. And um, so it's basically you call a phone number. It's a voicemail system. If you want to listen to the Inquirer, you can go into the specific voicemail uh, box number, or there's also a voicemail tree that you can use as well. And it's really on demand. So if you want to call at two o'clock in the morning and listen to the inquire, you can do that. Or if there's something that wasn't necessarily read in the front page, and there was a headline that you want to listen to, you can call and say, I want to listen to the article um, I want to listen to the letter that the Bengals player wrote uh, about the the Bengals winning the, the the playoff game, and and you can certainly do that. And it's um, it's a really great service, and um, not a lot of people really know about it. We really want to. Um, spotlight that service because it does come in handy a lot of times um, when clients are, are coming in and learning uh, about services from CABVI they don't always choose personalized talking print because um, with their vision loss if they're still learning how to access um, the buttons on their phone um, you know it can it can be a little bit um difficult. If you're struggling with using your phone, you're not going to want to use a voicemail system. But once you're good with, um, you know, you've, you've had some of your uh, tools with to help with your vision loss, and you're doing great with your phone, um, then it, you know, PTP is a really great opportunity. But you know, you probably heard about PTP so long ago that you don't, you don't even remember that it's uh, a thing anymore. Or maybe you didn't even hear about it at all because you were struggling with those phone skills. Um, so if you're, if you're interested more in that service, I'm just going to give my contact information and then I can um, pass anything on to Melody. Melody is our personalized talking print coordinator. That's all she does. Um, she runs the personalized talking print program. So she works with the readers and the listeners. And if, um, you know, a couple years ago when the pandemic started, we also had a major upgrade with the PTP pro program and that, you know, the system was down for a couple of days and, um, you know, she, she had to work through, um, all of that process. So, um, she, she's really great. And, um, I want to move on to um, the radio reading services, which some of you are familiar with the receiver where you get the receiver and you listen to it when um, it's on the air. But we also have uh, multiple ways now of listening to information. So we have everything available on a podcast. 
which is through um, CABVI's website. And then um, we're also available now on the Amazon Echo. And so it's really exciting if you ask, if you say the word, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to wake up everybody's um, devices. But if you say the word and you say, let me get this right, open Cincinnati Radio Reading Services, it will say, welcome to Cincinnati Radio Reading Services. It has a disclaimer because we have to, since we um, are reading copyright material, we have to let everyone know that you know, this is really intended for people who are blind, visually impaired, unable to access conventional print. Um, we do, if you are interested in these services, we, we would like to at least be able to have your name. We, for our, we really are trying to figure out how many people are actually listening um, to the different services and what you're listening to, so that when, when I'm um, writing for some of our grants and stuff, I can say, you know, we have this number of people that are listening and using it, our programming in this in this specific way. And um, again, these services, these on-demand services aren't to replace the radios. So if all someone wants is to be able to turn on a radio and listen to it, that's awesome. That's really great. We still have those and we send those out, but um, we're really trying to, um, I believe that listening online is, is, or on my phone is where it's at. Um, I'm visually impaired myself and a lot, and I use uh, JAWS and I also use voiceover. And anytime someone says to me, well, can't you just go on to the Inquirer's website and listen to it? And then I, I have them turn voiceover on their phone. And I say, do you want to listen to this for, you know, a period of time to listen to the newspaper? And they're like, oh, no. I mean, it's wonderful that it's available. And I'm very thankful to have all the access to media. But there's nothing like the human voice um, reading something. And I also say too, you know, for people using magnification, if you're really struggling reading the magazine that you like, or the newspaper that you like with that magnification, you know, let someone read it for you. Um, and our readers are really great. They're all volunteers. They love hearing, um, you know, I love being able to tell them, I just received a call from someone who, you know, really loves your reading of the Wall Street Journal. Or, um, and the other thing that we're trying to do is, is add more things as well. So if there's something local that we need to be reading that, that we haven't even thought about, or the other thing that someone requested the other day. So the way that we um, kind of do our newspapers is we have Cincinnati Inquirer Hour One and Cincinnati Inquirer Hour Two. Well, someone listening to it on the uh, uh, that that thing, <laughs> the Amazon thing, asked me the other day. Well, can you kind of try to split the hours up a little bit so that? you know, if we don't want to listen to one article, we could maybe skip um, to the next article and then not miss out something just because it was an hour. So that's definitely something good to uh, know about and um, that we can think about how can we make things better for the listener. And then also, as I said previously, um, we do have uh, one of my coordinators works with the Ohio Library for the Blind. So um, if you're interested in the talking books and you, um, you know, you're not planning on going to, to see your eye doctor, if we have your eye report on file at CABVI, we can uh, certify uh, uh, that bottom uh, piece of the application for the library for the blind and, and uh, get you signed up with that in Ohio and Kentucky as well. Um, so I know I've kind of thrown a lot of a at all of you. Um, and so I guess, does anyone have any questions or anything that I can answer? And then I will definitely make sure that um, Allie has information for you to uh, reach out uh, separately as well. I have Thanks one again. Question. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. I, I hate right. to think people, but I do have one question just right off the bat. 
Um, and you might have mentioned this, but um, do you have an on-demand telephone number for this? Yes, and actually, um, so we have an on-demand telephone number for the radio reading services stream. Is that what you are asking? Yes. Yes, so we do. And um, I don't have that in my exact to give it to you at this very second, but can I send it to you in an email? Yes, please. And that's perfect for, for when um, I send the recording and everything else. Yeah, and I can, um, if you want, when, when I'm finished here, while the next speaker is speaking, I can go and, and, and pull that. Um, I have it right here on my computer. I just need to grab it. No, take your time. I know we have other, other questions as well. So Jim, just cut you off. So what were you asking? Oh, uh, you're fine. Um, <laughs> thanks again, Jennifer. I, it, it's, uh, I don't know how many people that are on this call or will be listening to this call. Uh, are using the service, but um, I mean, you really get to know the readers, even though, you know, you just recognize their voices and well on Tuesday, it's, you know, this guy and you know, his style or, you know, this, um, you know, this girl and you know, her, you know, the way it, it, it is very personal in that, uh, in that regard. Um, and also just to echo your point, if there's something that, um, you know, you want read uh, that's on a page, I, it's as I've my vision has uh, deteriorated over the years uh, trying to read the newspaper then you're magnifying it then that gets difficult uh, and then trying to use voiceover and the inquirer's website and I mean it's painful um, it's painful just to go through it so this was a, a great way to I mean I'll listen to the whole newspaper but I'll grab the sports um, section or maybe you know a couple of the other ones so anyway I again I think it's a it's an awesome program and um, I haven't tried the podcast yet, but that may be again, another, um, another step up of, uh, you know, improvement. In it. And if you, if you're interested in the podcast, if you visit our website, which is Cincy blind, C I N C Y B L I N D dot org slash podcasts. And that's P O D C A S T S. Mm -hmm. So that's Cincy with a Y blind.org slash podcasts with an S and that will also give instructions to the um, the Amazon device as well. Tim, do you have a question? I do not have a question, but I have a comment. I just want okay. to thank Jennifer and, and again, CABBI for the continued support of uh, everything that we do. A great partner and um, I can say that I, I know what effort goes into that program and, and the volunteer efforts are, are extraordinary and the work that Jennifer and everyone does there is, is just phenomenal and we're extremely fortunate to have CABBI uh, and people like Jennifer in our community because it's uh, it, it just there's so many uh, things provided for us that uh, I think otherwise would be difficult for us to, to find so uh, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Really appreciate all you do. And you're welcome. And <laughs> I, I actually want to further my question. So I asked uh, about the asking for the on demand telephone number. Does that include for, or is that for personalized talking print on demand services? So we have two phone numbers. We have one that is on demand to our streaming. And then there's a separate number to personalized talking print. And um, for anyone interested in personalized talking print, we do want to get you signed up um, and, and have you um, start with us as a listener. So I can give out the on demand you know, listening to our podcast phone number. And then if you're interested in starting with a personalized talking print, um, I do want to uh, start a start a dialogue with Melody um, because it, it's very specific, um, you know, just a, kind of some instructions on how to use the mailbox because it can be a little finicky. It's really easy. Like sometimes it's very easy to, if you go in and accidentally delete something. And so, you know, there's a little bit of a training process for the, the personalized talking print program, but Melody's happy to talk to anyone who is interested in and would like to get started. 
Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Lisa. Hi, Ali. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, Jennifer, I'm wondering, does somebody have to be established with CABVI, like have, be getting services uh, to in order to sign up for these programs you described? Or like, could I just call and say, these are the only programs I'm interested. I don't I'm not looking for full services. Yeah, so we are happy. Um, you know, it is for anyone who is unable to access conventional print. So, you know, we might say to you, would you be interested in going through our intake services and learning more? And you're like, okay, mm -hmm. I've had vision loss for, for 10 years. I really don't need you know, I, I, I received services from other cities. I know what you're all about. I just want information services and we can, we can certainly do that, but we will probably now, if, if someone's interested in just the library for the blind, um, we would need to see that, uh, we would need to have an eye report from you because we would have to verify, uh, the vision loss for the, for the library. But as far as the information services, the broadcast, the personalized talking print, um, you know, we can, we would be happy to just um, sign anyone up for services that would just be interested in audio information. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? She was going to her office. I'm not sure if we have our third right speaker here. Um, let's see, is Melissa here yet? It's what? So worst case scenario, what we'll do is um, get a just a general information or maybe even a recording. But does anyone have any further comments for Ken or Jennifer? Jennifer or um, feedback on this uh, presentation. She will, she said she'll be joining in probably 20 minutes. So <laughs> um, it's a bit of a, a leap, but. Mm -hmm. Ellie? Yep. Yeah. Tim? Uh, just for now, if nobody has any questions or anything, it, do you want to talk a little bit about Hope From Home? A few more yeah, I definitely. Um, so actually, I, I see, let's see, um, I don't know if it's Susan or, or James, but please, yeah, <laughs> we see both your physical and um, the, the virtual hand yeah, raise. I'm, I'm off to the side here. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And James is resting his eyes because he usually ends up after breakfast, feeling uh, <laughs> overwhelmed, overwhelmed and tired in the eyes. So uh, this is kind of not the ideal time for him to be perky and smiley and whatever, uh, as, as most grim. people know him to be when they see him face to face. Um, <laughs> in dim light. And in, okay. Anyway, uh, this has been very, very informative for the feedback portion of what <laughs> I've taken. Yeah a uh, number of notes. Um, one of our friends, Evie Margolin, has joined us. Um, she has had to deal with a glaucoma for many years. So um, even though we're not dealing with glaucoma as an organization, I thought this information about reading services, because she's an avid book reader, um, would help her. Um, Evie, I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, yeah, she's motioning yes. So um, I, I thought I'd introduce a new face here. Um, I'm not sure if, if everybody of these other new names, I recognize Fred's name uh, because I know I met him at Vision Walk the other year. Um, and so uh, welcome, Fred. I'm glad you were able to join us from Northern Kentucky. Um, no, I think we met Fred when you, Allie, when you and Ben Shaberman came to town at Cavley, that's when I met Fred. Mm. So um, thank you, Fred. Um, I hope it's been helpful to you as well. Um, so 
I just thought I'd mention those things, you know, to, to make people feel welcome who are for perhaps new faces or faces we see, but not as regularly as we'd like. Um, so it's been very informative. And um, as Tim mentioned, the hope from the hope from home, is that what we're calling that um, initiative, that fundraiser that we're having in a few weeks? March 6th, yes. Okay. I'm going to mute myself so that you can have full control. Well, no, Susan, that what you said is perfect. Um, I, I hope everyone feels that this is a definitely two way conversation rather than um, being talked at. Um, but to talk about hope from home. So, um, you know, at the beginning of this discussion, I, I talked about all of the all the programs and initiatives at the, the foundation. Fighting blindness, sorry, I'll remove spotlight. <laughs> um, the foundation fighting blindness is doing, and one of those includes the hope from home. And because we're virtual, that is kind of like a well, it is a virtual gala, and we did it last year, and we're gonna do it again. So it's, um, we haven't announced who we're having, but we are going to have a, a celebrity host. We're going to have breakout rooms. We have a live and silent auction. We just a bunch of different scenarios, what you can expect in a gala, but virtual um, to keep everyone safe. So if you have any questions about that, um, super successful last year. Hence why we're having it again. But um, if you have anything that maybe we're putting together, Tim, thank you for um, leading this uh, chapter basket for the silent auction, just to really make the, the presence of Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky uh, present in the uh, auction. But is there anything that I, I missed for that, Tim? No, no, I think um, so. What we what we'd like to do, and what we did last year, is if anybody has any thoughts, suggestions, or would like to contribute, uh, or 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 talk to somebody you might know who can offer up a donation to the to the basket, um, is really just some things that represent our region. Uh, last year we did uh, we did uh, bourbon and wine and beer and things that were great at representing our region. Unfortunately, they can't be shipped. We realized after the fact, so we had to find some ways around that. Um, so this year we're looking at at some other things that say Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, that may also appeal to people outside this market, so that we broaden the the reach as far as who might be interested in bidding for those items. But uh, there's so many things about our community to be proud of, and we want to represent those things within this auction. Um, so if you, anybody has any thoughts or suggestions or anything, you can pass along to me or to anybody else um, in chapter leadership that's uh, pulling this together, to please have at it because we, we would appreciate all of that. Anybody happens to be close personal friends with any of the Bengals that can get us signed footballs or <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't want to seem like we're, we're grasping at straws here, but um, I, I would really like to take this time to, for everyone to, to come off mute um, to make this collaborative. We are still having one more speaker today, and that is a really, really important topic. I, um, it is similar to um, Maxi AIDS, but it's indep independent living aid. So, um, while we're waiting for that speaker, I would either love to get your feedback, love to get, um, if you think, you know, we should have these be one hour long or what kind of topics you would like to hear about, but, or just get questions about our, our two speakers so far. Um, I wanna use that time right now that we have versus, you know, reaching out later. Uh, Jennifer. Um, so I have the phone number for anyone that's interested in calling a phone number and listening to the radio reading services, which is our stream. And so if you want to listen that way, 
we can send you a uh, schedule um, as well. And so that number is, uh, it's 513 number 221-0634. And again, it's 513-221-0634. Um, and that's to call in and listen to our stream. And again, I'll send Allie all of our email addresses um, if you are interested in, in any of the other programming. Perfect. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, okay, Dan? Yes. Hi. Morning, everybody. I'm sorry, I don't have my camera on. It's still hooked up to my work computer, where I spend more of my time on, on Zoom than I ever thought possible. I just wanted to say I really appreciate this, these topics. Um, you know, the, the research and the science is always interesting to hear about, but the, you know, the tools that we can use uh, is definitely informative and helpful for me. I've already sent in my uh, application for the BARD thing, so I can start um, that using that. I've been traveling a lot for work, so I have time in airports and on planes to, to listen to lots of stuff. So I just want to say thanks for uh, offering this seminar and this information. It's been really helpful. Perfect. Thank you, Dan, for that feedback. And um, Melissa actually is going to be joining um, in the next minute or so. Um, she has to recharge her batteries, not physically, but literally. Um, so please stay tuned, but I really appreciate that, that feedback. Um, I was gonna do a poll for, for Zoom, but I think just hearing that is great. But if anyone wants to, perfect timing, there's Melissa, but if anyone wants to introduce themselves or say anything else, um, please let us know. But um, Melissa has joined us. And just so you know, Melissa, um, you are muted as of now, but Please feel free to unmute yourself. I know you said you were kind of in, interested in possibly sharing your screen, but take it away. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, no, I don't think I'll share my screen because I've got so many things that I can do here uh, without sharing my screen that um, that we won't have time for that. <laughs> So good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa Balbeck. I am the co-owner with my husband of both LSNS and Independent Living Aids. Um, we are two of the largest national distributors of products for the visually impaired and the hard of hearing um, in the country. We also ship all over the world to Canada. I like to say that our products range from the sublime to the ridiculous, meaning you can go from a a 45 cent signature guide to a $4,000 assistive technology device and everything in between. Um, I will try not to talk so fast, uh, but I know that there were, I was given a long list of products that y'all potentially wanted to see. Um, so uh, trying to set a bit of a land speed record without completely overwhelming you and without talking too fast, but just, um, let me know if, if, if I need to slow down a bit. Um, also, what I was thinking of doing, do I still have uh, 30 minutes? Is that what we're kind of thinking about? You do, Melissa, yes. Okay, so let me actually start my, my timer over here um, because what I was going to do is I was going to spend um, uh, 15 minutes talking about general products. Um, uh, five minutes talking about the blind shell phone, which I knew that there had been some real interest in this, and then 10 minutes for questions. How does that sound? Perfect. And if you want to go longer, please feel free, but we'll, we'll do that so right my, now. <laughs> my schedule is empty um, for the next <laughs> little bit, so I can clearly go over, but I, I also certainly want to respect everyone else's time. Um, so I was given a couple of different uh, categories of products. And I think what I'm going to do for the most part, um, because I have so many things here with me today, I'm not going to give you part numbers. I'm going to give you approximate prices that are off the top of my head. Um, but clearly, you can go to our website and get more detailed informa information, or you can ask me for more information at the end of it. But 
I'm just going to really try to give everyone an overview of the types of products that we have um, and the different ways in which we try to uh, serve people. So let's start with kitchen items. Um, the, one of the main philosophies of um, our company is we're trying to keep people independent, which means cooking for themselves and, um, and cooking safely for themselves. Uh, some of the bigger types of products that I don't have with me today, but I think are perfect examples of these are an air fryer, which has become super popular because it's just, you know, you drop and you go and you're keeping, you're keeping your fingers away from hot surfaces. And that's one of the things that a lot of our products do. Another product in that category would be a slow cooker or a crock pot. Again, a kind of a dump and go, nothing terribly hot, nothing to get, um, to get you terribly close to hot surfaces. Um, and a lot of our other kitchen products, as I say, they, I like to keep fingers separated from sharp edges. So along those lines, we have a couple of different things. One, we have um, a nice, oh, here we go, a nice set that has a set of four kind of paring knives. Whew, that's mighty dirty, sorry about that. Um, uh, a set of four paring knives that have covers in it. So you just, when you slide the cover in it, that way, when you're storing these in your drawer, you don't have to necessarily worry about sticking a hand into a drawer and cutting your fingers. Obviously you can get a knife block. I love knife blocks. We have two of them in my own house, but these are just great little paring knives. It, this has all come out of our show stock, which is why it's so dirty. Um, but it's a set of four and also they're all different colors. So you can never mix it up. Um, Two-sided cutting board, black on one side, white on the other. This has a price of like $13. And again, this, so the idea of this is to provide the highest contrast possible. So if you put an onion on here, it wouldn't give you great con contrast, but if you put an onion over here, it gives you really good contrast. Likewise, I would put a red pepper over here, a green pepper over here. You're looking for the highest contrast and it's just all one thing. It's not terribly thick. You can kind of see right there. Um, so uh, that's helpful. Another item that helps keeps fingers separated from blades, this has become super popular, is this dicing set. I'm trying to make sure it gets kind of in focus here. It comes with three sets of uh, uh, blades that you can swap out. I was going to use these last 15 minutes to really get myself ready, but um, that's okay. Um, you just slice, so there's these, there's the cutting collector, and then there's three different slicing styles for a thin slice, a cube, maybe onions, you could put onions in there, a smaller dice, see that, smaller dice, um, and so you would just, you put that, you put the blade in here, you put your vegetable there, snap it down, boom, do it like that, and you just shove it through and you've kept your fingers separated from the blades. So that's been also another really popular item. Um, for item, other items in the kitchen that we have, splatter guards, we have a set of three splatter guards. It's three different sizes. This isn't quite as big as it looks, maybe it is. Um, but uh, when, if you're cooking, and especially if you're visually impaired, I know my husband and I both cook a lot. When you, if you're pan frying something, you get grease all over the place. When you put this on top of it, it just makes cleanup a whole lot easier because that way you don't have to worry about where all the grease is gone. So the splatter guards are super helpful for keeping, uh, just keeping your kitchen a little bit cleaner and keeping the grease contained. This comes in a set of three sizes. Oh, uh, back on the knives, the cut resistant uh, gloves. These gloves have a little bit of, um, uh, I think these come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. I don't know which size this is. Looks like it's a little big for my hand, but actually I would do it the other way. I would put it on my left hand since I'm right-handed. Um, so that as you are cutting, um, you know, if you're, if, if you do this, it's gonna keep that blade away from your fingers, right? And so, cause they're cut resistant gloves. And so as you're chopping, if that, you can see I'm really, I'm scraping through this glove right now. And this knife is, 
actually fairly sharp. Um, so it just helps protect the holding hand. And I think, again, allowing you to cut and cook, cook and cut more safely in your own home. Along those lines, what I don't have with me here, we have a finger guard. It's something that goes, it just slides down over your fingers kind of like this. So again, as, as you're chopping, it would keep the front part of your fingers uh, safe. We also have, um, for the kitchen, we have several different types of timers. This one is a talking timer. And you can see, where's my mouse button? And it talks. And then I would start. And then anytime I wanted to know how much uh, how much time was left. Oh, no, you don't do that. Oh, wrong one, hold on. It's the talking button. So that's a talking timer. Turn that off. Um, we also have a, if I can, this is a timer, a regular rotary timer. You can see it's about four inches high. Um, it's not quite as big as it's looking in this picture, but it has on it, uh, it has on it, it has an overlay with bumps. So it becomes a tactile timer. At every two and a half minutes, there's one small bump. And at every 15 minutes, there's three bumps. And so it's just a regular twist timer, um, but you can kind of feel where it is on the circle. So that's a timer. Okay, we will move on to, I, I only brought one healthcare product with me today. That wasn't in the list, but since we are in the middle of COVID still, regrettably, um, we have a lot of talking healthcare products. We have three types of uh, personal thermometers. We have an oral, we have an ear, and then we also have the talking uh, forehead thermometer. And so this is kind of really helpful just because it's not contact. Let's just do that one more time. I'm not. So it's a non-contact talking thermometer. This particular one speaks in English and Spanish. I think our oral speaks in English and Spanish. We also have several other talking healthcare products. We have talking personal scales, we have about four of those. We have talking blood pressure meters, both for the wrist and for the upper arm. And we have talking glucose meters. So a lot of talking products there. Now let's move on to, oh, where'd my timer go? Come on. Uh, let's move on to time, time products. Um, Y'all had mentioned a couple of those. So we have lots of different talking and low vision time products. They can kind of come in a, a couple of different styles and varieties. This one is a talking atomic clock. We have atomic clocks and watches. This one is not set properly for the time because um, I just stuck the batteries in. Atomic clocks talk to a tower every night in Fort Collins, Colorado, and they reset themselves. So, you know, rather than have to futz with all the tiny little batteries to set the time on your talking watch or your talking uh, clock, this clock, as long as you don't live in a high rise building with a lot of metal in it, um, will set itself and it goes out and it rechecks itself every night at two o'clock in the morning. Um, uh, um, what was I gonna say? So it's great for daylight savings time. It's great when you have to change the batteries. Um, uh, this one also speaks the date. A lot of people really like the calendar function. The time is now 19 minutes past 12 a.m. The time is now 19 minutes past 12 a.m. Oh, well, maybe this one doesn't speak the date. It shows the date, but. The time is. Today's Saturday, yeah. January 1st. So you just push it twice, you get the date. Um, the display isn't super great. It's just an LCD, hard to see. 
but the time is pretty clear and it has a high, low, and an off volume control. For something, and this is around, just for, I should have been giving some rough products. This is around $38, I mean, pricey. Um, oh, for something a little more basic, and that's an alarm. I think almost all of ours are alarm clocks. This is another talking clock. It's also analog. You set the analog and the talking time separately. This one, no clock, no atomic. Um, it does have an alarm. It does have an hourly announce. Um, this one is, I think, $15. We just had to raise the price. $15, but super simple. The talk button. It is 11.26 a.m. Boom, just on the top. Um, put that over there. Then you can get into smaller timepieces like this. You know, hmm. I'm trying to, uh, things aren't really in super good perspective here, but here relative to my hand, you can see. So this, we call it the talking keychain, and it just speaks at the time. Uh, it also has an alarm on it. It also has hourly announces, I recall. You can put it on a key. It's just great to throw in a purse. It's great to throw in a pocket. This is just $10, and it speaks the time. So there's that. Okay, hold on. i got to go over to my box here, which I hadn't quite finished unpacking. I'm like Santa on Christmas here, but if you bear with me, um, I got a few more. Actually, Lisa, I totally forgot just because you joined early, Melissa, or thank you for joining early. You can, I, I don't want to rush you, but I don't think we did a proper introduction. So <laughs> if, if you want to, if you want to do the, her bio while she um, is. I dig out some more products. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I, I just, I like to be formal, um, but um, thank you so much for joining early, but yes. Um, I know we were talking about how, how wonderful you are. So please take it away, Lisa. And <laughs> thank you for giving the pro product recommendations. Okay. Um, well, my name's Lisa Kemp. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for working with me through email on what products and everything you were going to showcase today. Uh, I have been volunteering with the foundation local chapter here for about four years. My primary responsibilities are resources, mentoring, and I do some uh, professional outreach also. Um, as we're learning, there are products that are made specifically for uh, vision impaired and blind persons. And these products are meant to help make our lives easier in all of the things that we do throughout the day. Uh, personally, I've been using these products for 25 years. And I think it started when I ordered a talking watch because like Melissa was showing, how easy is it to hit a button? and hear what time it is instead of, I used to take my, I used to walk over to the window and tip my watch this way and that way. And is the light better in the bathroom where the light's bright or out by the window? Is the sun shining and all that frustration. So these tactile and talking products really do make everything so much easier. I have stuff all throughout the house, including that talking bathroom scale. Um, so when, you want to buy products. You really do want to buy from LSNS. Um, the sister company is called Independent Living Aids. I'm going to say that Melissa is co owner of both of those companies, and I'm not quite entirely sure. But uh, yes. previous to owning this company, Melissa held senior positions at Dell Computer. Uh, works.com, which was a tech startup, and Chase Manhattan Bank. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then I read on and went, wow, okay, so she has a master's from Yale, she had or a bachelor's from Yale, a master's from the Wharton School, and a master's in international relations from the University of Pennsylvania. And I went, really? And so I thought we couldn't be um, getting such, you know, great information from a more credible person is what I'm thinking. And thank you for being here on your day off, Melissa. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. It's like they're, when you own the company, there is no day off. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so thank you very much for that introduction. I certainly appreciate it. I'm gonna do a few more, just quickly show you a few more talking watches just to give you an idea of some different things. So I had talked about atomic clocks. We also have atomic watches. This one, I believe, so this one's atomic. It speaks with a male voice. Um, it also has an alarm. And so this one will go reset itself for daylight savings. Now, the only thing with atomic watches, what you do have to set in clocks, what you do have to do manually is to set your time zone. It will not, so if I travel from here to Chicago and I change time zones, it won't, um, it won't change. So you can get that. This is our regular choice of voice watch. I don't know, it is turned on right now. It's one button. There's also kind of in the talking, talking watches, um, they, what is more popular now is one button. You may not have all the functions, but it means that you're not gonna have all these other things over here on the side that you're gonna hit. This one, you can have a choice of either a female voice or a male voice. That does make a difference, particularly for, po for folks that, um, I think sometimes when, there's, when you start to have hearing loss, you may lose those higher frequencies, which are the female voice. Um, and so having that choice of either a male voice or a female voice may help with that. This is the same watch just kind of with a little bit of a fancier band. All of these, most of these watches, the analog watches, you could um, take the band off. You could take it to a jeweler and put your own band on it. Um, then for a low vision watch, if you don't like to make a, you know, make a fuss or make a scene when you're um, talking, excuse me, when you're just someplace, there's also low vision watches. This one is an extra large watch, extra large face. I have a very small wrist and you can kind of see Oh, this is not working at all. Hold on, maybe if I put it, okay, this is the back side of my wrist, but it gives you a sense of how big this watch is relative to the size of my wrist. It really takes up the whole wrist. And so for people that have still some moderate vision, I mean, my father, the reason we got into this business is my father has, um, uh, he's now 87, but somewhere in his 60s had the wet form of macular degeneration, really lost a lot of vision very suddenly. And um, he, my father, I think maybe it's you know, just his own personal preference. He just uses a low vision watch. Um, but it, again, that's sort of a, a preference thing. So let's move on from timepieces and time. Give myself a little room. And um, we can talk, we'll do a little bit of daily living aids. Um, I know that Lisa had asked about bumps. I don't know if you can see this all that well, but so bump dots are super helpful. Bump dots are super helpful because they can help mark things. Like um, if you have flat panel lighting switches and you wanna know which is which, you could maybe put a square dot on one of them a round dot on another. Um, and you know, if you ever if you if you drive regularly in someone else's car and you want to mark the volume button on the radio, you could put a small bump there. Some of these, oh, I'm gonna have a hard time, are really small. This one here is clear. This one is orange. So depending on whether you want to be able to see it or not see it. Um, you know, because some people, we had one, I had one woman just totally yell at me a couple of years ago because she was looking for clear high marks because she, when she marked her kitchen, she didn't want other people to see the marks all over the kitchen, but she wanted to be able to feel it. Some people want to see the color. Some people don't want to see the color. Anyways, you can see, like we have some of these that are all, these are different uh, sizes of orange. So they're pretty high contrast. The clear ones, less contrast. Um, you know, you could mark, uh, if you had a rotary dial on anything and you want to mark whatever is at that three o'clock spot, like if you're on an, on an oven, if you wanted to kind of mark medium and you had a rotary dial on an oven or a stovetop, I should say, you could put one of the smaller bumps on that. Um, bumps are just super fabulous and inexpensive, a really inexpensive way to just kind of mark anything. Um, 
we have a lot of different low vision pens. Um, so pens and low vision writing paper. I don't have any of the paper with me, but it's a way to um, uh, just be able to read your own handwriting a little bit better, right? So what am I writing on here? Oh, I can totally write on this. Um, these uh, pens just kind of leave a bolder line and they're just easier to see. They generally don't bleed through and it's they're inexpensive. I'm writing on the back of something else, but it, you can see this particular pen, I think is 75 cents and it leaves, leaves a bigger line. We also have things like this. This one here is the Pilot Bravo. It's a, it's a slightly, uh, it's a slightly smaller line. We also have a set, if you're not sure what one's gonna work best for you, we have a set that's I think $6, $7 and you, you get one of each of the pens and that just sort of gives you a sense of what's, what's the best way. And it's just, it's easier when you're trying to read your own handwriting. Um, something else we see in ask for, but I just thought I would grab it. Um, a organizing wallets. We sell a lot of these organizing wallets. There's nothing endemically or intrinsically designed for the low vision for, about these wallets, but they're just super organized. This particular one has three slots for change, little pockets for change. It has, um, I think, three uh, different sections for bills. One, two, three, four. So you can, you can put your different bill denominations in different slots to help keep them organized. It also has a zippered change pocket right here. And then it has really easy access um, slots for your credit cards. I brought the red one. The red one is great, not only because it's just super fun, but red is just higher contrast. I have a black wallet and a black purse and I can never find the damn thing. So if you had a red wallet, it's just easier to find if you've left it on your counter, if you've left it someplace else because it has high contrast. And as you all know, high contrast is one of the names of the game when you're trying to find something. Okay, there's the wallet. Games, Lisa had also asked about games. Just a couple, lots of different ways. We have tactile dominoes that are a little bit bigger. Um, these have raised bumps. I don't know how well you can see, but again, they're, you know, the dominoes, probably I guess about regular domino sized, um, but they're bumps, you know, the, 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 the surface is raised just to make it a little bit easier to feel the dominoes. We have all sorts of different playing cards. The point of the playing cards is just to, in general, most of them, are, um, are regular, the, the deck is regular sized, but it's the numbers that are bigger. Um, this is one of several. We have one where the red suits the entire, the entire surface of the card is red to make it even easier. This one has moderately sized numbers um, and uh, easy to see, but we have about, three or four different um, uh, styles of playing cards, low vision playing cards. Again, most of them regular size, bridge size. Although I think, I guess some of them are also poker size. Frankly, I don't know what the difference is between poker size and bridge size, but some people know, and they're very um, adamant about which size they get. Oh, time's up. Um, other things, you can get low vision game books. This is our low vision Sudoku. This comes in, oh, I can't remember how many volumes. I think Sudoku, we may have three different volumes um, because then you can also get crossword puzzles, which are large print. Um, this one, I think, is we have several different versions of this. One of our books has 20 point font. I can't remember. I think this is maybe 14 point font, but you can see it's, it's moderately large. Um, we also have things like uh, Connect Four, I don't know if anyone knows Connect Four. This may be a little too difficult, but um, when, you, when you get it set up, the idea is to get four in a row of your own color. Um, I can't 
can't see this right now. Four in a row, mural color. And what we do, and this is, it's um, for folks who are really visually impaired, we drill a hole in one of the colors. So if you couldn't even, if you can't tell the difference between the colors, the red always has the hole and the yellow has, um, is just solid. We have things like tactile check, tactile checkers. Um, that's in uh, the pain category. Um, one other thing I brought before, oh, magnifying glasses. Okay, magnifying glasses, I could probably speak for 45 minutes on this. I think the big thing to know with magnifying glasses, there's and we're getting three things with magnifying glasses. One, the stronger you get, the smaller the lens. The one here um, is a 3X lens, and the one here with the red button is an 8X lens. And as you get up to a 14X lens, it's going to be even smaller. So the stronger it is, the smaller the lens. And um, people get really frustrated all, that, all the time because they say, well, I want the square lens. I want the rectangle lens in a 14X. And we say, I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. Physics just won't let you make a lens that big. Um, so we always try to encourage people, one, to talk to your eye care professional, but then to use the lowest power you can because it will give you the, the biggest viewing area. The next thing is um, stand versus pocket. You can see these magnifiers are what we call stand magnifiers um, because you they set the focal distance. So these stand magnifiers will tell you exactly how far off of your reading material they need to be. So when you're reading this right here, you put, you put this on the paper and you can tell then that that's how far off of the paper you're supposed to be. Whereas once you get up to an 8X, you're getting a lot closer, which means if I'm gonna be using it, my eye is gonna be a lot closer because I'm just that much closer. But this one, I'm gonna be right about here. But this one, I'm gonna be right about here. So these are stand magnifiers. Compare these two. Hold on, I didn't get these out yet. The, what we call pocket magnifiers. And pocket magnifiers are just kind of as they suggest, you have to kind of pull them at the right distance off of the paper. This is a 4X and let's kind of compare it with the 12X. You can maybe see the size, the difference in the lens. Um, they're getting, they're just obviously getting a lot smaller as you get um, stronger. Uh, and then the big, the last, the last big thing in magnifiers when you think about them is illuminated versus not illuminated. Frankly, I would just always go with illuminated because illuminated just gives you that much more light on your reading material and allows you to work with it that much better. So I, I suppose there's maybe some reasons or sometimes when like maybe a, a quick little flip out magnifier you would want that doesn't have um, a light, but for the most part, you should always just use lighting with your magnification. Oh, one other thing, and then I will move on to the blind shell. Uh, I don't know if we have any uh, cane users in the group. We have tons of mobility canes. Ambutech is our, is our best brand and you can get whatever you want there. But we recently started carrying a telescoping cane. Um, that's really kind of handy. This one I think is about eight inches long. It's titanium. And unlike some of the other type, uh, telescoping canes that we have carried in the past, this one, each section locks so that you don't have to worry about it collapsing in on itself when you hit a wall too hard with it. Um, and so it, it, doesn't, it doesn't collapse until you want it to. And when you want it to, there's one push button and the whole thing collapses with that. And then you get this length and it's no heavier than a regular Ambutech cane. So I'm kind of excited about that one. It only comes in two sizes, so 50 inches and 54, unlike Ambutech, which you can get every two increments from 36 to 64 or something like that. Okay, lastly, I'm gonna talk for just a little bit 
about the blind shell phone. So the blind shell is a regular tactile button talking phone. So it's, I mean, this is my, I have, I have an iPhone, but it's small. I had, it's like an old seven. So you can see it's a little bit smaller than my iPhone. Um, it has a fairly big screen. Again, my phone is a small phone. Um, has a fairly big screen. And then it has touch buttons, right? Obviously, I haven't said it. But so it talks through everything. Actually, let's go back. And you can go back. Let's see. No. Let's see. Let's go back to here. No. So I don't have anything in here. So then let me see to get back to the main menu. Right. As you push and hold the red button to get back to the main menu. So it talks you through. I hope you can hear this. But. It has, and then it also has on it uh, a lot of different uh, kind of small applications. Like it has an alarm, it has a timer, a stopwatch, a calendar, a voice recorder, a calculator, um, internet radio, a camera, a music player, and all of these things talk. But I actually, I typed up here a little while ago, it was just a menu tree to kind of help me walk through all the menus and the sub menus underneath it. Um, uh, just because it's a little bit easier. The blind shell, the kind of the downshot side on the blind shell is that it only works with T-Mobile, only. Only, only. Um, it does not work with at and It does not work with Verizon. Um, uh, it only works with um, T-Mobile. This, there's also two other versions of the blind shell. This one is $350. There's the blind shell light that just takes out a lot of those other complicating features. So for someone that really just wants to use the phone like a phone, imagine that. The blind shell light was, would be a better choice. It's $250 um, and it's just less things to confuse you. Um, and then they've, they've come out with one called, this is the blind shell classic. They've come out with one called the blind shell classic two that we are going to be carrying shortly. And it is really more for the power user that wants a lot of the, some of the apps that are available on, um, on smartphones. It will have access to WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, um, and a couple of other uh, fancier social media communication platforms that I can't quite remember right now. And that one I think is, is either $500 or or 450, it's somewhere in that range. I can't quite remember. Um, but the blind shell light, which this is not, um, the blind shell right light is your best bet for a simple talking phone. And the blind shell classic is great for folks that are ready to have a little more, um, a few more features on it, like a camera, for example, uh, than others. And I, you know, I would say, like any of the products, once you start to get into the uh, more technological products. Um, it, it, there's a learning curve on it for certain. Um, it, it's the more you, you start to become familiar with uh, the order of the menu and how you can use some of the shortcuts to get back to the home screen. Um, 
the this classic does also have voice dialing, as I recall. Um, I'm not hooked up to any cellular service on this, um, so I can't demonstrate it. But uh, it it you you can use voice dialing with this. So with that, I have just looking around, whipped through all of the products in general that I brought home today. Oh, there was one that I didn't get a chance to set up back in the time products. It's a voice activated talking clock. So that if you were sort of across the room and you, you wanted to know what time it is, you would set up this talking clock and you'd say, hey, Moshi, what time is it? And that, then it will speak the time to you. So, and it'll, it'll, there's a number of functions that'll speak and you can set the alarm with your voice. Um, you can set, you can ask for the temperature. Uh, it has a bunch of different commands. Uh, so that's super helpful because again, if, if, you, if you have a clock and you don't, but the clock's not right next to you, but you can kind of yell across the room um, or you, there's a person has limited mobility, it's also very helpful. So with that, with my land speed tour of some of our products, what questions can I answer? I have one, this is Allie. Um, one came in through chat. Um, so that wallet you showed, the red one, um, is it designed for men? Well, it's the same wallet. It can be in black, brown, and red. So I don't know if that makes it designed for men. We also <laughs> right. have several other wallets. Um, in, in slightly different styles that are also for a visually, you know, that, that it kind of have some visually impaired, like we have just a bill fold, no, no coin holders, no zippers. Um, that's kind of more like a traditional men's wallet, but it does have four separate slots for, um, for bills, three slots. It has three slots for bills, and six slots for credit cards. And so that's a little bit more like a men's wallet. And Thank that you. one's just in black. Okay. Tim. Hi, Hi. Melissa, I just want to thank you. Um, and to let you know that I ordered the telescoping cane already. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I really appreciate your, your taking time uh, to, with us today. And, and this is really helpful information. And uh, I'm on both your websites, and and uh, good to know this information's out there. Thanks. Is there any other questions? I think Lisa, I have a question. couple. Lisa, um, actually, a couple comments. Um, one, those bumps that Melissa was describing, they are so simple, but they are so helpful. I cook. I do the laundry. I have bumps on the smooth surface microwave pad to show me where the key uh, numbers are that I want to use. I have them on the stove oven controls, the washing machine, the dryer. I've got one bump on the remote control for the television. I mean, you can put, like she was saying, you can put those bumps in many key places to help you find a setting that you're looking for by touch. And what was the other thing? Oh, the oh look, on the bumps, we also have a couple of packages under the brand Halos, H-A-L-L-S, Home uh -huh. Appliance Labeling Overlay. And it's a woman out of Rochester. And so for things like that flat panel microwave, there's specific um, microwave type buttons, like, uh, you know, stickers. Oh, like there's one okay. for popcorn, there's one for up, one for down. Um, and she, she has a set for the microwave, a set for the washing machine, and a set for the oven, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and so those sets just have kind of different shapes for different typical functions that you might have on uh, each of those different appliances. And so those are, you know, they'll give you, the, the whole idea is that they're stick on and they're in black, clear, and orange, um, but with additional shaping to it just mm -hmm. to give you some microwave oven and washer, um, hmm. just to give you some more shape options. Yeah, I didn't know about the shaping. I I graduated from orange to clear. Once it didn't matter, <laughs> yeah, because I couldn't see the orange, I went, well, clear is fine. And, you know, and, and like you were saying, then there aren't 
colorful bumps all over all the appliances around you know the house you don't even notice them the sighted mm -hmm. person doesn't even see them the um cell phone i tell you an audio command cell phone for those of you who are not using one is a thing of beauty you once the phone number's programmed in i pick up the phone flip it open or turn it on however and say call Allie and it calls Allie and if Allie calls me it says call from Allie no more pushing the buttons if but that one does have the raised buttons that makes it easier to find buttons if you want to dial you know by touch and then it also has the audio command texting I have a friend who uses that and you can audio command a text message or return a text message through audio command. Are there any types of products that I didn't discuss or are there any specific um, tasks that people are trying to find a product to help solve? We have about 2000 products, so um, there's a wide range of things that we offer. I was going to ask if no one has any questions, what if you have a best seller? Well, like talking watches, product. we sell buckets of talking watches. Um, we sell a lot of the low vision pens. Um, those are some of the the, you know, the highlights because they're less expensive and they just huge bang for the buck bumps. I mean, it really kind of depends on, I mean, we'll sell, th sell thousands of units of bumps, thousands of pens because they're, they're just a tremendous bang for the buck uh, in terms of the benefit that they provide for not a whole lot of cost. Um, and if you paired a low vision pen with bold line writing paper, you just made made the grocery shopping list a whole lot easier. Um, and it, not life changing, but one of the things I, when I talk with folks is I say, let's kind of just take this a task at a time and let's try to um, address one task at a time. We have uh, one more uh, hand raised, Jennifer. Um, so I have a question about the telescoping cane because I'm, I'm intrigued by it uh, because, well, for 21 years, I was a guide dog user. And so um, the last couple of years, I've been using a cane again, and I've always used a folding cane. But I have trouble, like, if I go to a concert or something where I want to have a cane, but it just... I don't know. It just takes up the folding, take, even the folding cane, it takes up smoke, so much space. So I really like the idea of the telescoping cane, but is there a way to attach it to something? Cause that's kind of one thing that I've always struggled with, with a cane as well is if there was a way to either attach it to my person or my purse, when I'm not actively needing it. Um, I just didn't know if there was something available that I just didn't know about. Well, we sell, um, so I just, just to begin with, I measured this one is 11 inches long when it's collapsed. It has a stretchy, uh, an elastic cord handle that theoretically you could um, put that through some kind of a carabiner and hang it on your purse, but then you got the, the cane bouncing around in your purse and on your purse and against your body. And I don't know if you really want that. Um, we do sell cane holsters that would, uh, you know, attach to a belt and then you could stick it in the holster kind of the same way uh, some people put a cell phone case on, on their waist with a holster. Um, not super uh, feminine looking, but it clearly does the job. We have some in uh, like we have a leather holster with a belt clip, so it would just shove on a belt or even kind of just down your, your pant waist. Um, and then you could put the cane into that holster. It's just black, it's leather, it's inobtrus unobtrusive. Um, we have some that are in denim. So those would be, the, you know, if you really kind of wanted to be completely hands-free and still have it on your body, you could get a holster. Um, or again, 
this one at 11 inches. And because, you know, the folding ones could sort of start to unfold in your purse and they really become unwieldy. And the great thing about this telescoping cane is we had other so-called mini canes in the past, which were good for going out, but really they, they just worked on friction. And so as soon as you hit them hard against something, they were gonna start to telescope down. And this one, I don't know if you could hear that. Those are all of the buttons locking each section into place. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections, nine. Um, it has a red tip, has a metal body because it's titanium. Um, and, but then it just closes with one button push. And so it closes easier than the other ones did. It's so easy. I'm a huge fan of it. And it has, as I said, it has a red bottom and a metal body with a black golf grip type handle. Yeah, that's why I, why I ordered it. I, I had the Ambutech I had, uh, this is Tim again. I had the Ambutech uh, cane, the similar to that one and twice, and I had to return it both times. The tip broke off within seconds um, wow. and it collapsed quickly. Uh, it just wasn't working. I loved it. Otherwise, the concept of it. So this met all those needs. It, I, so there were just times when I don't want the folding cane. And this one's so much smaller when it's collapsed. I, I just really like having that as, as another option when I'm traveling or something. So well, I, I do hope it works for you. I'm pretty, I mean, I'm not, I'll be honest, I'm not a cane user, but we sell a lot of canes and we work with a lot of people that work with canes, that use canes. Um, and I just think I, you know, your folding canes are probably always going to be best. Like, you know, your folding graphite cane, it's just going to be the most durable, the most light. Um, but this for its purpose, I think is, is the best option that we have. Hmm. Hey, Tim, would you order me one too? <laughs> it's, I, I ordered one for everybody on the house. Thank you. <laughs> you get a cane and you get a cane. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> um, I'll talk to Oprah. Okay. <laughs> you know it. Are there any other other questions? I know we're a little over the hour, but um, I want to make sure everyone feels their questions are answered. But if not, thank you for everyone for joining and especially our speakers today. Uh, we really appreciate you. As mentioned in the beginning of this call, we will make sure that um, a recording is sent out um, this following week, but if there's nothing else, enjoy oh, the- I suppose I should just do yeah. my, my job and give a quick plug, yeah. plug for our websites, uh, independentliving.com. It's pretty easy. You can also always call us at any time. I don't even have the, the phone number is, why, oh, well, not anytime, um, <laughs> nine to five cents e Eastern, nine to five Eastern, 800-537- two one one eight um you actually get a person on the first on the first don't have to push buttons look at it although like everyone else we've been hit by covid so sometimes we're a little short staffed so i'll make sure to when i send the recording to not only um thank you guys again but to include this contact information. So um, in case you weren't able to write that down, um, it will be in an email uh, this following week, but we really appreciate all your guys' time and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank you, everyone. Good day. Goodbye, everybody. Go Bengals. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>